And now for a different tempo, as the saying goes, he marches to the beat of a different drummer. Well, in Mickey Hart's case, he marches to a different drum. In fact, lots of different drums. And like the drummer, we'll beat it, but not without getting in step with the most creative and introspective man. More of Sunday today as the beat goes on. Shakers from Hawaii. It's time to get primitive here, so to speak, on Sunday today. We know about the primal scream. I guess we're talking to drums about what, the primal beats? That's, That's right, right. But, but it's not the men's movement. It's no, not the men's no, movement, okay. No mother goddess movement, although there's a little bit of that here. You'll see in just a second. How many times has a drum been part of our lives? The drum roll at the circus, the funeral march of a fallen soldier, and the sounds that make our feet move at a concert. Could it be that the drum is more than just an instrument to us? Listen, then decide. The sound of the drum. The rhythm of the beat. This is what Mickey Hart's life is all about. For more than 20 years, and still counting, he has been the backbeat, the heartbeat, for the legendary band, The Grateful Dead. It was all night for me. No, not a drop on me. His love of the beat led him to research. And like any great love, Mickey Hart felt the need to express it. The result is his second book, Planet Drum, a history of percussion that shows how the drum's lineage can be traced back to our beginnings. It originated in old Europe and in West Africa, uh, 30, 40,000 uh, BC. They used large cylinder drums, and uh, we know that there's only one reason for large cylinder drums, and that's possession trance music. These, the mother goddess cultures use these drums to drive their ritual, the very center of uh, their lives. Um, and of course, the drum lost its significance as it came, comes towards us in time with the, the development of Judaism, Christianity, they didn't want people running, going into trance states and altered states and so forth, so the drums became smaller. And then the drum comes back through war. Eventually, the African diaspora, the slave trade coming to Bahia, to South America, working its way up through the Caribbean, New Orleans, jazz, the blues were born, and eventually, rock and roll, dance music. We're hearing an echo of the old cultures. Well, I'm involved in a real-time ritual myself. The Grateful Dead is uh, one of those kind of group rapture experiences. The result of a 10-year search for the roots of his chosen profession, Mickey Hart discovered not only the history of the drum, but why we respond to its short staccato call. When you hit a drum, there's a, a big roar of noise that comes off it. That seems to uh, trip the midbrain, sending a signal to the cortex that says either run or fight or dance. We are a rhythm machine. You are and I are rhythm machines. We, we pump 2,000 gallons a day of blood through our bodies. We blink our eyes, you know. Uh, all of our mechanisms are rhythmically attuned. Rhythm is the real mystery. That's the real thing about this book. It's not just drums and drumming. It's the importance of rhythm and how man has pursued and played with rhythm prehistory. We see men uh, 15,000 BC on the walls in uh, the cave uh, drawings in France uh, playing percussion instruments. That's, that's way back there. Kenya, tubes from Hawaii, steel pans from the Trinidad. Hart started his research at home with his own collection of percussion instruments. In fact, he's the owner of the largest individual collection in the world. He keeps some at home in San Francisco and some at the home of the Grateful Dead, the recording studio. Hart showed producer Pam Cowie a museum collection that is the rhythm of history. And they're also called singing bowls because you can use the edge to vibrate. They sort of sing, or you can hit them. In the Philippines, they call unklungs. And moving in and out. 
Some yeah, are gifts from friends, reflecting the cultures that Hart has come to know. It's one of my favorite instruments. This was given to me by, by Ayerto, one of our uh, greatest drummers. Some of the instruments well, are created from Hart's imagination. These are made up of door stoppers. This is one of my favorite instruments. This is a damaru. It's from Tibet. It's made from the crania, two skulls joined at the head. And it's a ritual instrument. It's used in their most sacred rites. Hart has become an oral historian. He has taken his tape deck into the rainforest and the jungles to record the percussive sounds that come from the people. We see these cultures precariously, you know, teetering on the edge of extinction. Uh, firstly, I'm a remote recordist. I love to record. Uh, that's where it all started, basically, just learning how to record. And then I fell on these uh, incredible cultures that were disappearing. Their musics were being taken. As a culture gets destroyed, one of the first things that go are its music. The music contains all the folk tales, all the, the, the stories, the legends, all the history of those people. When that goes, it's over for a culture. If you lose your music, your history. <clears throat> well, when I saw the rainforest being destroyed or the Chinese killing all the Tibetans, the monks, this was a way for me to shine some light on those cultures. He has been chasing the sound of percussion throughout his life. Wherever there is sound, Mickey Hart will find it and record it and make it music. My son. I recorded his heartbeat in his mother's womb, brought it back to the studio, and overdubbed a sordo, that big Brazilian drum, and a little flute, and um, a bass harmonics. And then brought it back into the delivery room where he was born. So he's the youngest recording artist ever. My mother and father were both drummers. And my dad left when I was a little guy, about a year and a half old, and he left. One thing he left was his pad and a drum, pair of drumsticks. And I found him one day, and I hit that pad, and I fell in love with that noise, that thud. For this late 40-something PhD of percussion, the prescription is measured in a steady beat. The beat that keeps this rock we live on, this planet drum, rolling. Well, Mickey Hart and some 15 of the world's great drummers will be taking a tour throughout the world performing mm -hmm. percussive instruments. Taking, and, uh, taking all the drums, I suppose. Basically. <laughs> yeah, the beat goes on. That's fascinating. I, I hadn't thought of drums and the instrument as, as having that kind of a range. It does. And as you can see there, just by what uh, some of what Mickey Hart showed us, that w when we think of drums, we think of boom, boom, but there's so much more. That, uh, that it makes almost a symphony. And actually, the basic point he's making is the rhythm, not the notes. And in a way, rap music is the ultimate example of rhythm now. That's right, because it's very percussive. Percussive. Oh, to just add that when my daughter, who's 22 months mm -hmm. old, hears orchestral work, she calls it a drum song. And it's not because the drum is the loudest. There you go. Uh, That's there what you she go. picks up. We'll have news and weather in just a moment. We'll be right back.